Now that I've collected the data for my RC circuit, what I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate to the folder that contains the data, and I'm going to take the LVM file that was recorded using LabVIEW and drag and drop it into um, an Excel sheet. And Excel should recognize that it's a tab delimited file, and it should go ahead and place the uh, measurements and all of the information into the columns. All right, so the first column here is going to be our time column, the second one is going to be our input voltage, and the third column is going to be our output voltage. All of this header information is really not that meaningful to us, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get rid of it. Okay, so the first thing, the first action that we should do here is take a look at, um, I'm going to get rid of some of these rows here, um, is take a look at how the input and output change as a function of time. So I'm going to select my data, I'm going to insert a scatter plot, right, and I'm going to see that um, once it completes this, this is what my data looks like. So um, at some time, I s it was the input voltage was zero, and um, at some time I switched it. Uh, let me actually change the format here so that um, so that we can see things a little bit better. Try it one more time. Insert scatter plot. Here we go. I'm going to draw them as lines so we can see it a little bit uh, more clearly. All right. So at some time, um, I suddenly changed the input value from zero volts up to about five volts, and then my um, then my output voltage across the capacitor changed right after that step input occurred. So we're really interested in looking at what happens during this transient period, what happens from the time that I, oh, that I change the switch position uh, and close it to apply the uh, potential across the capacitor. And what I want to try to determine is the time constant associated with this um, with this input. So the first thing that we want to do is uh, we want to know when this step input change happened. When this, uh, when I suddenly connected this entire circuit to an input of 5 volts. So that's why we recorded the information. So what I want to do is I want to uh, comb through my data here and look for the point where the input changes from about 0 volts to 5 volts. And it looks like that happened according to the graph um, a little bit after five seconds. Okay, so let's scroll down here. After five, six seconds. All right. So now I can tell that uh, right here at this time, um, after 7.21 seconds, was when the switch, uh, the switching occurred. So what I'm going to do is I want to. Um, get rid of all of this extraneous information up here because all of this was the steady state before the switch changed its position. So I'm going to take that data, I'm going to delete it, and I'm going to shift it up. Okay, all right, so now this is what our graph looks like and we're interested um, really in the data only until about 10 seconds here. Um, we have this typical RC response that we're going to look at and try to determine the time constant based on it. Okay, the other thing that uh, we need to do is because our um, all of our modeling has assumed that the uh, switch position changes or the step input occurs at time equals zero, I'm going to insert a new time column. And um, now that I've gotten rid of the data before the switch opened, all of this data corresponds to right when the, when the, excuse me, when the switch closed. All of the data that I have for my input and output from this point on um, is uh, what happened right after the switch was closed. So I'm going to enter a second time and um, I'm going to call this the adjusted time. And this adjusted time is going to um, reflect, it's going to be adjusted so that time zero is when the, uh, the input was changed from zero volts to five volts. So the way I do that is I take my time column over here and I subtract from that this first, uh, this first time value. 
and I want to make sure that that always stays constant. So I'm going to put the absolute references or the dollar signs in front of the value that uh, relates to that cell. All right, so the first time is time zero, and everything else after it is going to uh, increment by um, by a hundredth of a second because we were sampling at a hundred hertz. Okay. So now, the question is, how do we determine the time constant? Well, one simple method for determining the time constant is to go back to the definition of the time constant. So if we go to the definition of the time constant, what we have looked at is for a first order system that looks like this. If we have an ideal voltmeter, which, um, which may or may not be the case for our system, but we're assuming that this is an ideal voltmeter, um, we know that the output voltage that's measuring the potential across the capacitor after we close the switch should have the general first order response. So all we need to know is what is the input voltage, uh, excuse me, what is the um, initial voltage across the capacitor, what the, um, what the expected uh, final value is across the capacitor, and then we're trying to determine what this time constant is. Okay, so for this system, before the switch was closed, we we're go going to assume that the capacitor was fully discharged, which actually looked to be the case from our data because the output voltage was zero. So before the switch was closed, the voltage across the capacitor was zero. We know that from the properties of capacitors, the output voltage or the voltage across the capacitor cannot change instantly. So the instant after we close the switch, the voltage across the capacitor still needs to be zero volts. After a long period of time when the switch is closed and 5 volts is applied across the circuit, we also know that the capacitor is eventually going to act like an open circuit. And in that case, there's going to be no current through the entire system. Since there's no current through the uh, capacitor, there's no current through the resistor. Since there's no current through the resistor, there's no potential drop across the resistor. Therefore, all of the potential that's being supplied, which in this case is 5 volts approximately, has to be dropped across the capacitor. So after a long period of time, we also know that the steady state value should be 5 volts. So what I'm going to do is plug those values into here. And I know that V out as a function of time now is going to have to be negative 5 times e to the negative t over tau plus 5. Or we can rearrange that a bit and it can be um, 1, oh, so, excuse me, um, we can pull, uh, pull the 5 volts out of there and we can do 1 minus e to the negative t over tau times our 5 volts. Either way, um, we can look at it um, that's, uh, as, as the functionality that describes how the voltage across the capacitor is going to change. So now we're looking for the time constant. Now remember that we have data on how this system behaves. So based on that data, we can estimate what the time constant of the system is using the definition of the time constant. So what I'm gonna, going to do is I'm going to say, I'm going to ask the question, what should the output voltage be, or what should the voltage across the capacitor be when one time constant has passed? So when time is equal to the same thing as the time constant. Well, when that happens, I get negative 5 times e to the negative tau over tau plus 5, which is the same thing as 5 times 1 minus e to the negative t tau over tau. Okay, which is also the same thing as negative 5 e to the negative 1 plus 5, or 5 times 1 minus e to the negative 1 times that quantity there. Okay, so now we're going to evaluate what this is right here. Okay, so I know that e to the negative first power, or, or 1 over e, is... 0 0.368, so about 36%. 1 minus that value is going to tell me that my output, after one time constant has passed, should be 5 volts times 1 minus this, which is 0 0.632. All right. 
63.2% of this 5 volt change corresponds to 3.16 volts. Okay, so what I can do now is I know that after the switch is closed, the time that it takes for the output to get to 3.16 volts should be the same thing as the time constant. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my data right here. Okay, and now I'm going to simply scroll through my output and determine how long it took for the output voltage to reach 3.16 volts. And I see that from my data, that occurred between 0.1 and 0.11 seconds. All right, so I can estimate that the time constant for this system is somewhere between 0.1 and 0.11 seconds.